Uh, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Cinema Squad. This is Clash and I'm here to review the first Alfred Hitchcock movie on our list. Uh, there's going to be uh, many others I'm sure, but uh, this is the first one to pop in and I'm really glad to uh, having the privilege and why not the honor to review this movie. Uh, the movie is Rope. Uh, it's a movie he made and um, it was based on a play and uh, it was uh, this movie was re was released in theaters in 1948. Um, so okay, I it's impossible to talk about rope without uh, going into some of the uh, technical aspects of the movie. Uh, you know, the main one being that Alfred Hitchcock uh, shot this film in like almost like one take. There are no cuts. I mean, there are, there are cuts, but, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll get that. I'll get into that later. But the movie is, you have a, one camera uh, panning all over this, this room and showing the characters. So it's almost like, I, I, it, this movie must have had, like, uh, they had to rehearse it like a play. But uh, it's, it, it fits with the whole plot of the movie. You know, it's, it's a suspense, and, and, and you, you have to see those reactions as they happen, so the movie had that, you know, it gets you that effect, and, and it, it's, so, uh, let's, let's get into the story. Uh, a couple of uh, students, they, inspired by their former teacher, uh, which is played by Jimmy Stewart, uh, this teacher was a huge advocate of uh, Friedrich Nietzsche's, like, uh, Ubermensch, uh, ideas and philosophies like the the superhuman the you know like I'm not gonna get, I'm not gonna get into Nietzsche right now but uh, it inspires these two uh, students to commit the perfect murder and the movie begins with them uh, killing one of their uh, friends and uh, hiding the body inside a table uh, from then on they proceed to throw a dinner party. Uh, because the whole point was to prove that they could commit the perfect murder and you know so they host this dinner party and the buffet table was where the body of their former friend or friend was hidden so the whole movie revolves around this dinner party and the father of the victim is there the, the victim's fiance is there and the teacher is there, and the teacher is totally unaware that he, you know, inspired these two guys to commit this murder in this heinous act. So, and then the movie goes on, you know, it just shows what's going on. One of them is pretty, uh, you know, uh, cool about it. He's not showing any signs of nervousness or whatever. Now, the other one is a little bit more upset. And the movie builds suspense. You know, we're talking about Alfred Hitchcock, so the movie builds suspense from that as well. Uh, uh, one inter in interesting thing that I have noticed, I recently saw uh, Robert Zemeckis' What Lies Beneath. And he, you know, he said that that movie was a homage to Alfred Hitchcock, and I can totally understand that. You know, where some, some scenes where you have, like, some characters sitting on a table, and they're, like, they're not having, like, one conversation. They're, like, you know, having this cross-conversation. One is talking, you know, there's this table, and, you know, they're talking to the person that is, you know, like, they're, it's pretty cool. I don't, I'm not, I don't even know what that's called, if there's, like, a name for that or whatever. But, and, yeah, so the movie is shot in one take, almost one take. Uh, the technical difficulty was that, Back then, you couldn't. You you only had a limited amount of film, and a little, limited amount of time uh, that you could do that. You know, just, for, just you know, like for a one shot thing. So, from time to time, and I'm not sure how many times this happens during the film. I should have counted. But anyways, the the camera pans. You know, it, it zooms in on an object, and it goes dark, and then that's when they change the rules, and then the movie resumes. From that, you know, object, you know, whether it's a chair or, or a cabinet, or, or and it goes back and 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 resumes. Now, my only problem with this movie is the ending. Uh, this was not. If this movie had been made today, it would have a completely different ending. 
I am not saying that, you know, it, let's just say that, let's just, uh, okay, I'm not going to spoil anything, or maybe a little, but uh, if you compare the ending of the original Scarface to Brian De Palma's remake, that's pretty much what happens, you know, it's like, you had to have a morale, you have to have the, the punishment of the, you know, but the way it happens... Uh, with James Stewart giving this speech, and it felt a little bit preachy. But it does not spoil the film. It does not spoil the experience of watching uh, this movie. So it's, uh, it's, a huge, uh, it's a huge experience. And uh, if you guys have never seen the Hitchcock film, it's a good way to start, I guess. No, nah, not really. I'd start with Cycle or The Birds, but... Uh, give it a give it a chance. It's a great movie. So, thank you for watching this review. Uh, I'll see you guys some other time. All right.